So today we're looking at the cell surface membrane. This is an absolutely fascinating subject because it's involved in every single cell, including prokaryotes. Now we can see a diagram of it here and notice how it's got two layers. And those layers are primarily made up of phospholipids, but within them, we've got protein channels, peripheral proteins, integral proteins, globular proteins, glycoproteins, and glycolipids. Now, don't worry about remembering all of that straight off the bat. We're going to look at it in more detail in a moment. So what is the cell surface membrane? Well, as we've already mentioned, it's the phospholipid bilayer. Phospholipid, because it's made up of phospholipids. Bilayer, meaning two layers. Think about a bicycle, which has got two wheels. A bilayer has two layers. It's often described as a fluid mosaic. Now, if we look at this mosaic on the right hand side here, you can see that it's made up of a collection of smaller tiles that fit together. And if we look at the fluid mosaic here, the cell membrane, we can see it does look very similar to the pottery mosaic we looked at before. Now, the reason it's called fluid is because the proteins can actually move within the structure of the membrane. Now, it controls what enters and leaves the cell. And because of that, we refer to it as selectively permeable. The cell membrane surrounds organelles like the mitochondria too, but other organelles like chloroplasts, endoplasmic reticulum, Golgi apparatus, many of them will have a cell membrane around them. Prokaryotic cells do not have membrane bound organelles, but eukaryotic do. Now this is a closer look. So have a look at this structure. You need to know it. You need to know what each of the parts do and how they interact. The phospholipids, we have the hydrophilic heads, the circles, those red circles at the top. And we have the hydrophobic tails moving away from the solutions inside. And they're what repel polar molecules like water. Now you can see at the bottom, this is the cytoplasm, which is an aqueous or liquid kind of gel. And we have the extracellular fluid, which could be tissue fluid, for example. Now membranes are mainly made of the phospholipids. So let's draw its structure now. So first of all, we have the phosphate head, which is a chemical formula of PO4. We have the phosphoester bond. We have the glycerol. We have the ester bond. And then two fatty acids, and they can be saturated or unsaturated. This top region we refer to as hydrophilic because it's soluble in water or it's water loving. The bottom region we refer to as hydrophobic because it's repelled or it repels water, meaning water fearing. Now this is a closer diagram of a phospholipid molecule. I'd recommend pausing the video and draw it now. We can see that the phosphate is made up of PO4 and it has a double bonded oxygen with three single bonded oxygens. The glycerol has three carbons, the fatty acids, basically have a carboxyl group at the top and then a hydrocarbon chain coming off them. And the ester bond is that shared oxygen between the fatty acids and the, the glycerol. The phosphoester bond is that shared oxygen between the phosphate and the glycerol. So phospholipids are made up of a hydrophilic and hydrophobic region like we just spoke about. Glycoproteins, a separate molecule in the membrane, are proteins with a carbohydrate chain, and they're involved in cell-to-cell -cell recognition and the immune response. Glycolipids are lipids that have a carbon chain or a carbohydrate chain, bonded by a glycosidic bond. They're involved in maintaining stability, and they're also involved in cell recognition, which makes them integral in the immune response. Cholesterol gives stability in extremes of temperature. So at high temperatures, it gives stability and at really low temperatures, it maintains fluidity. Protein channels, they facilitate diffusion and they'll allow molecules like water or glucose to get across the membrane. Carrier proteins 
They're also involved in facilitated diffusion, but they also have a role in active transport too. Integral proteins, they form up things like channel proteins, transmembrane proteins, receptors, enzymes, but they're also permanent. Peripheral proteins, on the other hand, they associate temporarily with the cell membrane and they form non-covalent bonds and they have roles like acting as enzymes. And you'll look at that in the secondary messenger model of your second year. So that's everything on cell membranes, guys. I hope you found this video useful. Thank you for your time and I'll see you in the next one.